Okay guys, I want to keep this one short and sweet. We have four lines, consider this one line with birds, one line with mammals, one line with insects, and one line with humans, which are also mammals. Um, you're getting one point per line, so if you complete all of these, you get one point. If you complete all of these, you get two, three, four. Uh, you, know the, you know the deal by now. What's most important in this assignment is to make sure that your shapes are showing. This is all about shapes and how, can, how you can use shapes to help facilitate certain drawings or all drawings, really. Um, so whatever you do, just make sure that the shapes are showing through and that you don't erase them. We will erase them on the next assignment, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'm going to give you a sheet of paper and I want these references to be bigger. I want two of these to take up the whole page here. And the remaining two, I want you to do on the back. So yeah, they're very small, but they don't need to be big. You're gonna increase it and just use relational proportion. A basic, you know, it doesn't have to be super detailed. What I want you to get used to is the idea of using the shapes to complete the objects or whatever creature it is you're trying to draw. So I'm going to start and I assume that I'm going to get through this uh, pretty quickly. So I won't be doing much talking. Doesn't have to be exact. first animal here which is this eagle once the shape is in pay close attention and just do the outline Put something that resembles feathers. Normally you would go back and erase the guidelines, but you're not going to. I want to see them. If I look carefully, there's feathers all along here as well. So let's just those in. Yeah, that's it for that one. Now this smaller bird. like this that's not a big deal the whole purpose of this is just to understand how to use the shapes Uh, it seems like I'm doing them way too big. So I'm going to start decreasing the size a bit. Or you could rearrange them. It doesn't have to line up perfectly either. Okay, I'll just do the shape. This is the swan. Let 
and just quickly we're going to put in some details. And the last of the birds is the penguin. Do the shapes first. And the penguin shape is pretty basic. And then I add the details around the shapes. And that's it for the birds. I'm gonna fold this over since I'm working on a table just so it's easier to record. So everything stays within the picture. Um, like I said, I want the birds here and the mammals. And then on the back, I want the insects and the humans. So you could just go, well, no you can't. Well, you could fold the paper in half, just work on the easel this in half and let me begin on the mammals. Mammals are a bit more complicated than the birds but it's the same process just draw the shapes and follow them. For the mammals or for anything it's usually a good idea to use circles as, as joints See, I'm putting a circle where the knees are, the elbows, and the wrists. And then let's go ahead and start putting this together. Make sure I'm in frame. There's the other hand back here. And lastly, the tail. Luckily here for this monkey, there isn't very much detail. Maybe there's some hair on the butt. And then he's got these weird alien looking eyes. And maybe an ear over here. The head is a little bit rounder. And that's enough detail. Now we're moving on to the elephant. Let me just zoom in a little bit more, focus it. Okay, the elephant. Do the shapes first. Don't worry about it looking neat. Uh, we got a big oval for the body. Not too big because we need space for the other ones as well. We got the knees. My trunk is a bit too long, but so be it. Shorten the trunk. Okay, and then just um, add some basic detail. Add an ear. We're going to add the 
trunk. Well, let's add the tusks before we do the trunk. Not that it matters much, which you do first. Now we're going to do the trunk. And you'll actually find that this isn't really as hard as you think it is. It's pretty, pretty simple. I'm going to do the back leg. And this is the same way it would be if it was larger. You just break it down into shapes and you draw it. Once you learn how to do this, then really anything becomes possible. Especially if you're using references, which is exactly what we're going to do for the next assignment. And last but not least, we're going to add the tail. Alright, the elephant is done. Now we're going to move on to this little rabbit. We're going to add shapes first. Tail. To give the face some form, you'll see me curving that sometimes, and we'll go to that with more detail in the next one. And add a little bit of hair here, the back paw, a little funny nose, and a funny mouth. And that's the bunny, oh, a bunny, maybe not that bunny. Okay, now this wolf. Again, we're gonna do the shape. Shape of the body, back leg, joints, front leg, joint, paw call for the back leg. And this Wolf is missing the back leg, so we're going to give him one. And lastly, the other front paw. Relational proportion, so that should end a little bit higher, but that's okay. And don't forget to add the tail. It's okay if it overlaps the rabbit a bit. Now the toughest part of the wolf is probably the face. I'll do something like that for the eyes. Doesn't help that my pencil is not sharpened. And let's give it some ears. And we're not going to worry about extreme detail today. Just the basic idea on how to, you know, draw a wolf. That'll be good enough for the wolf. And that concludes the mammals. Next up is the insects. The insects are a bit funny when it comes to this because they they are shapes, you know, just naturally uh, because of their carapace. Um, either way, just try to break down what is their body into different shapes. So, but do all the big parts first. You see, it just insects pretty much just take care of themselves.
toughest part of the insects is probably the legs and making sure that they're spaced appropriately. But I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, for the tail, then it's got kind of this detail. A few lines here. I'm going to do this. Make sure that this is in the camera. I'm going to do this claw. This big claw over here. Oh, they're both big claws. And then some more legs on that side. That's it for the scorpion. Moving on to the ant. The ant should be one of the easiest ones. We've all drawn insects like this ant. You have the head and the three different parts of the body. Oops, it's in the wrong place. Should be a little bit lower. Even though I think it's a bit it's a bit too low for the reference actually. I think their antenna's on their head, but whatever. Let's just follow the reference. Little eye. And that's pretty much it. And we're just gonna add some very thin legs. The legs are great from the previous assignment, just follow the lines. The legs are pretty much comprised of lines. Spider, same thing as the as the ant. Sorry if that ant wasn't on video, but I'm trying to make sure the spider is, I'll draw it up here. Um, same thing, maybe even easier. That's it. You know, maybe a little pattern here and there. And then just put your legs in. Yep, I'm on camera. Uh, the legs are also separated into three parts. That's important to know. Um, you don't always see the three parts, but you know, just in case if you want to design an insect yourself, just remember the legs should be in three parts for most insects, as far as I know. There's always exceptions. There's always weird, you know, animals that don't follow the rules, and mammals, and birds. Uh, lastly is this beetle, which is also very simple because it is just a bunch of shapes. And just the same thing on the other side to finish up the insects.
And that concludes the insects. Now we're moving on to the humans and then we'll be done. Okay, the humans is, I don't know, I don't think this particular task is too difficult, but once you're trying to invent new things like we're going to do in the following classes, it becomes a bit more challenging. Uh, let me just zoom out a bit. But this is pretty simple, so pay close attention to the shapes. We're going to start with that first one. And like I said, we put that kind of line in the middle, that curved line in the middle to give it some shape or some dimension. Circles around the joints. This also lets you know exactly where the, the hands are going to end. Use a triangle for the groin area. And this uh, particular, I make all these references that you guys have in class. Um, I put them together. I mean, I didn't invent these drawings. I didn't create them from nothing. I, I pulled them together from the internet. Um, but these particular ones, I think that I did create the, the circles. So I tried to use different shapes just to show you that different shapes will work. The whole idea is just to, to be able to lay it out. And it, you don't have to go with a specific shape every time. As a matter of fact, for the next assignment, I like to use doodles. I don't know what I'll use. Depends how I feel in the moment. I can see these humans are taking just a bit longer. More moving parts. Sorry if you can't see the end of this. Okay. Now, on to the next one. And if you have a bit of imagination, you could see it, you know. You could see the figure before it's even, there's anything there. And then just put a quick outline to show the calves, etc, etc. Two left. I don't know why, but these humans are kind of giving me a hard time as far as reporting them. There. The shapes in.
these are also called for people and for the animals. They're called gestural studies when you just leave the shapes. All right, and the last person, and we'll be done with this. Uh, this assignment should take about. Well, I'll let, I'll be lecturing for a little while, but it should take you maybe 20, 30 minutes. Um, this is something that I expect you to finish in one class period. Because I'm not looking for too much detail, I am. All I'm looking for is just the shapes, and I think that it's pretty easy to execute. Usually the elbows line up, so that's why you do the shapes. Make sure that the arms are the same size. You know, nothing is too big or too small. Should be a little bit lower. And when you're actually starting a sketch, it should be very loose, just like this. You could always add detail later. Just you want to establish everything, make sure everything is the right size. And that's it. That's all you have to do. And next assignment, we'll go into more detail when I ask you to create your own character. And it should be fun. It should be challenging, but fun. See you in class.